Have you ever seen a Pokemon card that can do this? Well, you're in luck because the Pokemon Company invited me out to an exclusive Pokemon TCG Pocket event in New York City. And all I gotta say is I have a ton of information from the Easter eggs all around the event, a presentation from the Pokemon Company, and an exclusive question and answer session with some very important people from Creatures and from the Pokemon Company. So stay tuned for that. I took the elevator up and arrived exactly at the location for the event where I was greeted by Kelly from the Pokemon Company who handed me this awesome bag which had some good stuff in it which I'm actually going to open up for all you guys right now. Inside we have a Squirtle plushie, a Sfeel deck box, Oh, this is cool. This is really cool. <laughs> and a Sfeel playing mat, which I'm now going to use as my mouse pad. Thanks, Pokemon Company. After getting our goodie bags, we proceeded further into the event where there were a bunch of Pokemon TCG Pocket displays. Now, before I get into that, I do want to mention that I did get to test out TCG Pocket while I was in Honolulu, Hawaii for the Pokemon Worlds 2024, but the only experience there was just really opening up a pack and you got an exclusive sticker for doing that. So that's really really cool. Now in the main lobby, we were greeted by the Pikachu card that you saw in the beginning of the video and that was shown off in the trailer. Immersive cards are absolutely insane. And there was also a beautiful Bulbasaur card that was right next to it. I mean, just look at the art on this card. It's absolutely amazing and exclusive right now to the TCG pocket. And then in front of that, they had a kiosk where it showed the Pikachu animation and just played it on loop. But it's just so cool to see that there are such a thing as immersive cards. There was also a really cool TCG pocket spot where you can take photos and something special is going to happen there later in the video. But I just took a selfie with my friend Austin and then we proceeded to head outside where we were greeted by a beautiful Mewtwo card and a Charizard card on top of a rooftop. I mean, look at this view. Now, of course, there was a bunch of food and refreshments, but the most special part of this all was this right over here that I'm holding in my hand. There were TCG pocket packs filled with cookies, and we were told by Stefan from the Pokemon Company to collect all four. And what were those four Pokemon? Well, my wife, Henna, grabbed one, and then I thought I'd open hers, but then she said this. Let's see what we get. No, you, that's mine. Oh. <laughs> you get your own. <laughs> Dang. Dang. So I grabbed my own, and then we all started to open it up. It worked out perfectly because my friend Alchemy Sunday, aka Dev, pulled a Psyduck. Yeah. Psyduck? Oh, you gotta show Nate. Oh, he's Don't be best. jealous. Austin John pulled an Eevee. Oh, Eevee. Oh, My wife, she got a Bulbasaur. Oh! And me, I pulled. Pikachu! I got Pikachu! And as you can see, I, I may have eaten a couple more cookies. Anyway, moving on. After eating all our cookies and having some food, I then went back out to the entrance area to film some extra B roll. But when I walked out, I couldn't believe it. Pikachu was waiting right there for a photo op. And since I was right there, I had to run up to Pikachu. Pikachu! I'm the first one to take a picture of Pikachu by accident. I also had to show Pikachu the awesome cookies they had packed in this. After that, I then told Pikachu to strike a pose and this happened. Pikachu, give me some B-roll. Strike a pose, Pikachu. Yeah. <laughs> and you should also strike that subscribe and like button just like Pikachu to get awesome videos like this. After that, everyone hung out again and were then called into a room for a presentation about TCG Pocket. Now, here's the crazy part. When I walked into the room, there were two cards on display just like the light up Mewtwo and Charizard outside, except this time it was a beautiful Squirtle card and a Moltres card. Those are just two more cards to add on to all the amazing cards that they're showing off during this event. So make sure you're keeping track of them during this video. Once we were all in the room, we had an amazing presentation from Stuart from the Pokemon Company. And this is the really important part because this is filled with ton of information you need to know about the game. And I'm going to make it as easy to explain to you as possible. Also, I just wanted to mention later on in this video, you're going to find out some secrets that weren't mentioned during this presentation and maybe some upcoming plans about TCG Pocket, so stay tuned. All right, let me walk you now through the game. So essentially, here is how the core gameplay works. You get to open up one pack every 12 hours, which means you get to open up two packs 
per day. You can even earn pack hourglasses to reduce the time by one hour. Now there's two ways of opening. You can either open one pack or 10 packs at a time. And this is the animation that was shown off. And opening 10 packs at a time is very satisfying. I, I already struggled just opening up one Pokemon card at a time. Now the first expansion of Pokemon TCG Pocket is going to be called Genetic Apex, which is going to have over 200 cards in it. Now there are three versions of Genetic Apex. Apex booster packs, a Pikachu booster pack, a Mewtwo booster pack, and a Charizard booster pack. Now, something you need to know is that certain cards in the game are going to be unique to specific booster pack art that you use. For example, if you open up a Pikachu booster pack, the lucky immersive card that you'll get is going to be the Pikachu that you've seen a ton of times so far. And if you open up the Mewtwo booster pack, you're going to get that awesome card that was shown off during Pokemon Worlds, which is the Mewtwo breaking out of a glass which is ridiculously amazing. And there is a Charizard booster pack, but I'm gonna leave that up to your imagination. Now for the future, the number of booster pack arts that they use will be different by each expansion. So just keep that in mind. Now, if you're wondering when new expansions are gonna be released for this game, it's going to be on its own time schedule. So it's not gonna be tied to the Pokemon TCG that we're normally used to. It'll be according to how Pocket has its own release schedule. Now let's talk about some really cool features about the game. The first feature I want to talk about is Wonder Pick. Now Wonder Pick is really interesting because it allows players to select one card at random from a booster pack that is opened by another player. So for example, you'll see this random booster pack here and you'll see the very rare Squirtle is inside of this pack. It gets all shuffled up completely. So you have to guess which card is the one. And if you select the right card, you get it. Now don't worry if someone opens up your pack and chooses a card specifically, it's not going to take away your card. Now, I don't know if this was just for the event or if this is a really nice bonus to have at the start of the game, but when everyone was handed a phone and was testing out the game, every single person, no matter what card they picked, were given something really cool, like the Squirtle card that was shown off in this example, the Bulbasaur card that was shown off during the event at the start, and I'll let you guess what the other card was. Hopefully that stays in when everyone gets to play the game on launch. Now, there are also some special kind of wonder picks that may appear that sometimes include items, promos, or rare cards. Now, in order to do wonder picks, it requires wonder stamina that recovers over time. And the item wonder hourglass can be earned and used to reduce time until your wonder stamina recovers. Just important to note that wonder picks do expire after a certain amount of time, but can be made available by using a rewind watch. Just in case it expires and you saw something really cool, that's what you'll be using that for. Now, the next feature is very personal and very customizable. They call this showcasing your collection. Now, they had something known as a collection board. So for this, you can tap on all your cards and you're able to actually view and toggle something known as the dex toggle to see any missing cards. And you can filter all the cards by a variety of the attributes. So it's very easy to locate certain cards that you want. Now, the game allows you to create binders, which are completely customized collections, and you can apply custom covers to the binder, like this Evolution one, and you can obtain them in missions from the shop. And once you have these, you can share this with your friends or other players. I mean, it's a great flex or just, you know, to match your aesthetic of your favorite Pokemon. Now, they also have something known as display boards, and the example of this is going to be this Charizard card placed in it. You can place whatever individual card on a unique backdrop to show them off. You can obtain these from missions or from the shop. And of course, this is also something that you can share with any friends or other players. On top of this, you can even add more personalization. And what you can do is you can add custom animations to the cards in order to get these various things known as layers on the card, you can get them by getting duplicate cards and then turning them into shine dust. So if I pulled a really special card and then pulled another card, the game does not automatically get rid of the extra card and turn it into shine dust. You have to manually turn that into shine dust 
yourself. And once you have your Shine Dust, you then have options to purchase various different players. For example, here's a Bulbasaur from these screenshots, and you can see that there's various different players we can also put onto it. You can also add personalization to accessories. And the cool thing is you can actually earn accessories in a variety of different ways, which includes missions, limited time events, or in the shop. And these include coins, card sleeves, and play mats. So customization is everything in this collectible card game. Now let's talk about the earned in-game currency. The first ones are shop tickets, which can be obtained by completing missions or step up battles. And if you're wondering what missions are, they're simply just tasks that you do in the game. For example, maybe have five cards in your collection and bam, you've completed a mission just like that. And you can use that in-game currency to redeem for cosmetic items and accessories. The next ones are emblem tickets, which can be obtained by completing themed collections or dex missions. These can be redeemed for emblems that can be added to your player profile to flex. The next currency are special shop tickets, and these are obtained by consuming high rarity cards, which can be redeemed for special accessories. Then comes the event shop tickets, and these are obtained by completing event missions, which disappear after a certain period of time, basically when an event ends. And these can be redeemed for limited time accessories, so coins, card, sleeves, play mats. I think one of the biggest takeaways from the whole currency is just play the game daily open up the packs if there is an event try to do all the event missions and rack up that currency so you can get these limited or special items it'll just make your collection look cool in this game and you never know if a limited event is coming back or not and this is a great way to stay on top of the game now because this game is developed by creatures the makers of pokemon tcg this is obviously going to include nostalgic illustrations that we have seen in the past that are incorporated in this game as well as new card artwork only found specifically in TCG Pocket. And there are some beautiful new cards like this Moltres card, Lapras card, Articuno card. And one of the cards I actually recognized from the presentation was this Raichu that was drawn from Akira Igawa, which is from actually Cosmic Eclipse. I have the box, the booster box right over here, who I actually had the honor of meeting while I was in Hawaii. And she signed a poster of the shiny Charizard from Paldean Fates for me. So it's just really cool to see her artwork also in this game, as well as the other amazing illustrators. Speaking of all these illustrations and rarities, let me tell you about the entire rarity system that they have. Now, this rarity system is unique to TCG Pocket. It's not really correlated with the actual TCG game. And here's how it goes. It goes from one diamond to four diamonds. Here's some examples of the cards. And then from one star to three star. And during the event, we saw something that might have been even better than that, but I'm not going to say anything more Then that's something you have to find out. Now, the way these cards are presented, their digital expressions are completely different of how they like to show it. Each cards actually have their own thickness to show the depth and dimension. And you can see on the lower rarities, it's a little bit more plain while you move up rarities, the borders are a little more in depth. You can see a shine on them. And you can note that there are also two unique hologram patterns used for both illustrations and borders. You also get this really cool parallax effect when you move the card which is of course only obtainable in this game i don't know maybe in the future that might happen for real tcg cards but for now it's only available in tcg pocket which adds a lot of depth to the card and the cards look so gorgeous i mean just look at it moving now the full art cards showcase so much of the pokemon it's so much in depth of the artwork of the pokemon actually in their natural environments and i think that's one of the coolest things about the pokemon tcg having all these pokemon show up in their home environments it just makes the cards have a little more oomph to it now i'm personally someone who has gotten into the whole entire tcg hobby by collecting and not really a battler but this game also has battling so i might get into it but let me show you exactly how it works in this game now this game is focused specifically on being more fun and casual than hardcore competitive so the battle system is optimized for mobile devices so you can play really quickly in a short amount of time now these quick battles feature streamlined rules based on the classic pokemon tcg battle system so here is exactly what you need to know a full deck in this game contains 20 cards versus the conventional 60 cards you can have up to three pokemon on the bench and they have something known as as a streamlined point based system. Prize cards have actually been removed in this game. Now, battling, pretty simple. 
one point when you KO an opponent's Pokemon, and two points when you knock out an opponent's Pokemon's EX. The first of three points wins. There's also auto-generated energy in the game, so there's no energy cards. There's an auto-calculated HP bar, no damage counter dice. Got that all out the way. Now let's move on to the next part, which is the battle options and the deck building. Now here's what's really cool. You can battle against the computer or locally with friends or family or with other players from around the world. So you don't have to be in proximity of someone to battle them. I love that. Auto battling is also available. My favorite part, especially if I don't want to pay attention too much and just get certain tasks done. And this is going to allow the computer to help you battle. You can also build custom decks or use the auto build feature for help crafting a deck. On top of that, thank you, Pokemon. They also have rental decks that are available for use, and those can also be obtained through deck missions. Talk about convenience for almost anything. Now let's talk about the fun stuff, aka the money. Let's talk about the first currency known as Poke Gold. One Poke Gold can be used to reduce the wait time to open an additional pack by two hours. Remember that I said it takes 12 hours to open up a pack and you can open up two per day. So you can purchase this in order to reduce the time by two hours. You can combine Poke Gold and Pack Hourglasses together to reduce the time to open a pack. And you should note that the pack hourglasses will get consumed or used first before the Poke Gold is spent. The smallest increment that you can buy Poke Gold in the shop is going to be for 99 cents, and that'll give you a total of five Poke Gold, which will total up to 10 hours. You can also use this Poke Gold to purchase other accessories. But of course, this option exists for the players that may not be as patient for waiting, so that's totally up to you. You don't have to use this one. Now, the next one is really cool, and I will be actually doing this one. This is the Premium Pass, which is a monthly subscription of $9.99, which allows players to open one additional booster pack. This one that comes with the Premium Pass refreshes every 24 hours. Now, the good thing about this is the first time subscribers will get this for two weeks at zero cost. So you can do this for free for completely two weeks. I suggest everyone take advantage of that. The other cool thing that comes with this premium pass is premium missions which will allow you to obtain unique promo cards and special in-game items such as play mats cards leaves and coins also i wanted to say that the promo cards acquired via this premium pass subscription are going to have the exact same attack and abilities as their counterpart card it's literally just a different art but i know since this is a collection game kind of a big deal to own a premium pass subscription for whatever promo card is out during that time but essentially it's just just an alternate illustration and there's footage of me figuring out how to find it on the app once again big shout out to Stuart for doing this entire presentation and that was a lot of information so feel free to go back and rewatch any parts you may need and now after this we were handed the top secret phones from the Pokemon company that had TCG pocket installed on it and we all went and started playing the game my wife's not too much of a hardcore gamer but she was having such a great time opening up Pokemon cards with me and she was getting absolutely excited I was also able to do some pack battles with friends and check out a lot of other features in the game it's really cool and basically we were all just pulling cards non-stop the entire time and getting excited about all the art we were seeing this game can be pretty pretty fun and trying to fill up your entire collection is probably the number one goal out of everything but here's what some other people at the event had to say about the game the art is beautiful and seeing how interactive it is is just super cool the opening packs is fantastic it's awesome. The artwork is adorable, very cute. The immersive cards are super cool. I've never seen anything like that. So I just want to keep opening more. It would be a pretty good stepping stone for the card game for kids. I would appreciate them having a digital collection like this, but also too, it teaches them the rules. It gives them the fun of opening packs. I really like the interface a lot, like the way the app looks. It's very smooth, very easy to like get around. I like that you don't have to manage energy as like, oh man, did I draw an energy? No, well, I'm out of luck. Now you can just be like, cool, I have energy. Now I get to play the game. Now, after all of us enjoyed ripping packs inside of the game, talking with one another sharing what we pulled and me grabbing another one of these cookies because they were so good I, I i really i ate another one don't judge me i don't get to eat pokemon cards that often it was then time for an exclusive interview Kelly from the Pokemon Company told us to enter a room where we would have an exclusive Q&A with people from Creatures 
and the Pokemon Company. Now, when I walked in this room, all the way on the left, sitting down with the laptop, was David from the Pokemon Company. And David should look really familiar to you because you've most likely seen David. He was there translating everything for me for the Nintendo Treehouse for Sun and Moon, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. And he was also on stage translating for Ishihara during Worlds. And now David was going to relay all the questions we had to the four people that I'm about to introduce. On the left was Ryosuke Hanawa, the senior director at the Pokemon Company. Next to him was Satoru Nagaya, the art director at Creatures. Next to him was Ryo Sujikawa, the creative director at Creatures. And then all the way to the right was Kita Hirobi, who is the executive corporate officer at the Pokemon Company and also the producer for TCG Pocket. So we were about to get some exclusive information. To break the ice, I actually asked the first question, which was, What's everybody's favorite part about Pokemon Pocket? And they all had some awesome answers. Like the collection aspect of the game, the EX cards opening up the packs in a simple way where his wife can even enjoy doing it. Now, there were a bunch of other rapid fire questions asked during this interview, but three of them really stood out to me that were important. One question asked about a pity system. So if there was a set that was out and you wanted to collect every single card and you were missing just one of those cards, how would you obtain those cards? And the answer that we got was you get pack points from opening up packs. The higher points you get the higher rarity of a card that you can exchange it for so just think if you're doing the premium subscription that's going to be accelerated with the three packs per day or if you'd like to be a whale in the game and spend more pokey gold it's just going to help you get to that faster but you can get there the free route as well now my buddy real breaking nate had a really cool question that he asked next to me if there's any plans for a crossover from tcg pocket to the actual tcg and i was really shocked with the answer they gave because they didn't just say no we're not going to mention anything about it they said this i can say right now we're, our, our focus is really on like you know taking a lot of the cool art and illustrations from the, the physical card game and also you know combining them with some of the cool digital things that we're doing in pocket to make it feel unique and cool so at the moment we don't have any concrete plans to do like kind of the example you said like mm -hmm. a tcg crossover where maybe we're bringing something back but at the same time we do know there's you know a lot of people out there who would be looking forward to that kind of thing so i think we'll, we'll definitely be keeping it in mind when we yeah, interesting come up with our plans in the future i mean let's be honest if pokemon go out of all games got a pokemon tcg set i would expect tcg pocket to eventually somewhere down the road get a card set irl and that would be one of the probably the most gorgeous card sets ever pokemon please make it real now next to nate was pokemon cast and pokemon cast asked the coolest question as well which was can you collect cards in multiple languages? So if we traded with someone in Japan, would we be able to get the Japanese card? And the answer that we got was this. You will be able to get cards in other languages when you're trading with people who have those cards in other languages. So you'll be able to get the cards that are that language, not oh, that's physical. Oh, that's so language. cool. Yeah, really cool. So yeah, that was one of the things we really wanted to kind of keep from the physical TCG, that kind of fun of getting uh, different language cards. That by far is probably one of the coolest things in the game. And let's just say you have this extremely rare Pikachu card, and now you own it in all the languages and your binder is a Pikachu binder, just showing off all the same rare Pikachu in every single language available in the game. That is a flex. And talk about having a unique collection to show off. Also, it'll make it really fun to make friends all around the world to trade. Now, during the Q&A, there was also a question about what platforms they're optimizing so it's really going to be for mobile devices and the ipad but the apple vision question had me thinking a little bit and after that was all over i actually showed all of them a video on my phone of me using the apple vision pro to actually use Pokemon apps, play the Pokemon game, use Pokemon Home inside of it, as well as play Pokemon Scarlet and Violet inside and trade in the game. And they loved it. I wanted them to kind of maybe imagine what it would be like to do TCG Pocket in the Apple Vision Pro that where you can open up packs and augmented reality. I just think that would be really cool. And after that, we posed for a photo together. Now, if you check out this video over here, you can see the video I showed them on the Apple Vision Pro. And if you click on this video, you can see the Pokemon TCG set that actually got me collecting Pokemon cards. So decide what you want to click on and let me know what you think of TCG Pocket.